Electrical devices work by being part of an electric circuit, which is a path where electrons flow. Circuits depend on conductors, materials that permit the easy and direct flow of electrons through themselves. Some materials, such as glass or plastic, are poor conductors. In fact, they're typically used as insulators, materials that resist the flow of electrons through them. Many metals, however, make good conductors because they offer less resistance to electricity. Copper is considered an excellent conductor because it offers very little resistance. Also, it doesn't rust and it's easy to work with, so it's often chosen to make wire. But all conductors, even good ones like copper, offer some form of resistance. There may be just a little resistance, but it's always there. Let's start with a simple circuit. The circuit goes from one terminal of a battery to a light, then back to the other terminal of the battery. When we complete the circuit, the light goes on, electrons are flowing. Next, let's build the same circuit, but this time with more wire. When we complete the circuit, notice what happens. The light is not as bright. What happened? We can measure the current in the original circuit. It was two amperes. The bulb was bright, which showed that it got plenty of current, a good flow of electrons. When we added wire, however, the bulb was not as bright. That meant less current went through the circuit. We can only measure 1.5 amperes in this case. Why? Remember, every conductor has some resistance to electricity. When we compare the resistance of the circuits, we see that the extra wire in the second circuit added resistance. When we replace the extra wire in this circuit with another light, we see similar results. The first light is still dim, and so is the second light. The extra light took the place of the extra wire in the circuit. Every light, like wire, has its own resistance, and when you add resistance, less current will flow. 